Hi everybody, welcome. It's, uh, it's Friday night and as promised I thought we would do a uh, MIM Revisited. Uh, do you remember the programme Brideshead Revisited? Oh, my me, me, me mic's on on my laptop. Let's just switch that off. Hold on. That's it. Yes, do you remember Brideshead Revisited? Well, every time I think of MIM Revisited, I think of that, that programme. And it was it was really good, wasn't it? And didn't the fella always carry his teddy bear with him? I think he was he was an adult, and I think he used to uh, carry his teddy bear around with him. And um, yes, it was a, it was a good program. It was you know it's one of those Sunday night programs, wasn't it, that we all watched and enjoyed and and what have you. And and times have changed, haven't they? Now we watch all sorts of rubbish now. Um, what was the latest one we were watching yesterday? We were sort of on catch up from holiday still. And it was one that's on the Monday and Tuesday night, and then, is it? Yeah, Sher Sherwood, Sherwood. Not allowed to say Sherwood Forest, are we? <laughs> didn't like it. The copper didn't like it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I thought what I'd do is um, have another look at Tilly. For whatever reason, in the goal group last night, I was calling it something completely different. Goodness knows what. But um, it's definitely Tilly, which is this lovely little pattern here. It's this little one, and um, it's just adorable. It's one of my favourites. I mean, some of the some of them uh, undoubtedly always become my favourite in some way or another. And uh, yeah, it was it's a, it was really nice to make that. And it's got a little bead at the top that you can use to gather your ribbons up to sort of tie that up, and it makes quite a nice little top. Uh, I quite like the effect of that. It, it looked really, um, I don't know, decorative. Yeah, decorative, that's the right word. Anyway, it's a good size. Um, it is still on the website. And uh, if you look under uh, MIM patterns on the front page, go straight in there. It, and I think it was probably the early part of last year. So you might have to scroll down a bit. Um, uh, I was going to find the link, but then I got sidetracked. <laughs> I didn't find the link but if any, if anybody finds the link perhaps they'd post it for me and then uh, people know wh where they can get it and they can choose to buy or not it's still only a pound so it's it's great value so yeah so I actually designed this for like makeup pads and things like that because it takes the like little cotton wool you know the all your um, upcycled ones that you've made yourself you can have them so they fit in there and it's, it's a good size, but also it takes other things as well. I mean, it would take a bottle of perfume for, for um, you know, birthdays and, and um, Christmas time. I'm going to say it, Christmas time, that, those sort of things. It's, it's almost like a, a gift bag that you can put lots of other things in. Um, and one uh, little thing I wanted to show you was um, when I went to Birmingham to our La La Land event, um, our Hayley Phillips um, gave me this. Thank you very much, Hayley, if you're watching today. Um, and it is a Tilly and it's you can see the top if I show you the top and she's um, elongated it I'm pretty sure it well might, I think it's perhaps about the same size yeah I think it's the same size but taller um, and obviously it takes interesting things like that I haven't opened it yet I like to keep things for a little while as they are being as they've been given to me so that was from Hayley um, and she's put some gorgeous beads on there, really lovely beads. And she, she did me a little card look to match. Isn't that the cutest thing? So I thought I'd show you that because you can make it the regular size that's in the pattern or you could elongate it. Now this, this um, wine that's in here, it's a smaller, would it be a half bottle? I think it's a half bottle because so, it's smaller than a regular size bottle of wine. Um, but of course you could adjust the width of the fabric as well. It's just, I suppose, the design is all about the top part here. If we close those um, beads in, you can see. I just, I just love how that looks, that appeals to me. So it doesn't really matter what size that you um, make it. Um, but just enjoy it. It's a very um, nice, simple, easy pattern to ease us back in after a lovely holiday away. Uh, oh, Kath, thank you so much. Kath has put the link on there. Um, hello to everybody on Facebook. Hello to everybody on YouTube. Um, it, was a, it was an event that I put on my page, but, you know, these things get lost, don't they? So if you can't watch today, it doesn't matter. You can watch any time you like. 
any time you like. Yeah, so we're going to make Tilly. Um, I'm going to put that safely so it doesn't roll off my desk. Let's pop it down there. There we go. So Tilly looks like that. That's the, that's the pattern that you will download for a pound. Um, and Kath's put the link on there, so that's very kind. Thank you. Um, and um, obviously then you can choose to make it. Some of the old ones kind of get missed now because we're obviously we're, 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 well, I don't know how many we've made. So many, so many. Close to 100, I'm sure. I, I don't know, I haven't counted. But some of, the, some of the older ones get overlooked. We don't see them anymore. So I thought if I did a memory visited once a month on a Friday, then we can be reminded on some of the patterns that are, that are still there for you. So um, I've cut all my pieces out. I haven't done much more than that, just sort of preparing. Um, so let me just um, switch this over for us. Um, actually, I've got a little, a little announcement to make. Let me, let me go back. Let me go back because I've just remembered I've got a little bit of announcement. Now, um, I don't know whether this this lady is watching okay but if not i will direct her to this afterwards okay i'll let her know i just need to go into my photos because i took a screenshot i had a message way way back in may from christy and paul okay christy and paul and if that's your son paul then you'll know who you are this is a message from Christy and Paul to Meryl Sands. Big surprise, Meryl. And the message reads to me, but I'm going to read it out. It said, good evening, Lizzie. And this is from Christy and Paul. I am traveling in the States at the moment with my partner, Paul. I'm not sure if, if this is something you do, but Paul's mum is a gold member of yours, Meryl Sands. And she's coming up to a big birthday on Sunday. Now, the big birthday has a zero in it and it has an eight in it. It's not too hard to work out. I'm not sure I want to say it. I'm not sure she wants me to say it, but I've kind of given you the numbers so you can work it out. <laughs> so Meryl is coming up to a big birthday on Sunday, the 19th of June. We are sad and sorry that we will not be able to make her birthday celebrations, but we were wondering if on one of your videos you could wish her a very happy birthday from us and you, that's me, um, I think this would mean a lot to her. Many thanks, Chrissy and Paul. So thank you, Chrissy and Paul, for that message. And, and I replied, oh, yes, definitely. But I'll diary it so it's nearer the time. Um, so here's wishing Meryl. And like I say, we'll, we'll tag her in afterwards if she doesn't join us tonight, because people have lives, they do other things, um, to wish her a very, very happy birthday. I can't believe you're the age you are, Meryl. You're absolutely incredible. And I hope you have the most amazing day and that those who are with you on that day will spoil you rotten. And I want to hear all about it. You'll have to put some uh, messages on uh, the uh, gold group for me so I can read them I can't wait so yes yeah, so happy birthday Meryl and I, it's lovely I can see all the messages coming up from everybody wishing Meryl oh there we are Meryl is with us Meryl is in the comments oh it's making me cry <laughs> don't because it made me cry um so you could reply to that to Meryl's post let's quickly move on um you can reply to Meryl's post if you like because she's just commented so Big, big birthday celebrations on Sunday and I'm absolutely thrilled that you joined us tonight, Meryl, because I wasn't sure. I knew you were about last night, but I wanted it to be on a public video where your um, son and, and uh, his partner, Chrissy would actually be able to watch it as well. So so that's me done. That's my big announcement. And I'm absolutely thrilled I could have done that. Right. So let's crack on. We're going to make, as I said, we're going to make... Um, Tilly. <laughs> Let's get the right name. I don't know what I was calling it last night. I think I was still in my holiday mode. I'm still in my holiday mode. So I'm just switching my iron on, as you can see, because what I want to do, let's just move the uh, computer stuff, is I've got all my bits and bobs here to make one. Do you know what? I, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I was going to make one out of Christmas fabric. 
and I thought oh my gosh you're going to absolutely go crazy because of course Christmas is um, for us in the Gold Group and on Making It Monday is going to be next month. Um, it um, it just happens that m mainly in the in the trade, let's say, people celebrate or get all their new ranges out on um, in July. So um, that's uh, that's something that I've always done with the jobs that I've done on TV. Um, it was always Christmas in July and that's kind of stuck with me so I'm afraid it's stuck with you now and I know some people will hate it but uh, I must be honest with you the projects that I do for the Gold Club for Christmas are usually quite intense or quite a bit of work and certainly I was talking to Kath today about one of the patterns well that's not very well cut that, you'll have to forgive me for that um, is is going to be i mean i don't I, I don't know if you can remember joy the box joy from last year um i took it away i took all the gubbins if you like on holiday with me last year and we were down in cornwall and dorset and all around there and it took me all of my holiday to do all of the hand stitching and uh, the patchwork that was needed for making joy um, now this is the this is going to be the little loops. So if you have a look at it here, I'm just now going to fold this for the loops. Okay, so nothing. You're not missing anything. I'm literally doing my laundry. Yeah. So um, joy was an absolute labour of love, and I was inspired um, to make joy from my mum because that was one that was the last project that she gave to her class uh, before she got poorly, and. I was lucky enough to see one of her ladies complete it and it was absolute, I, I can't even begin to tell you how beautiful this box was and I thought you know what I, I need to do something as, as best as I can that would be doable for everyone in the gold group and we had some made and I, I know I can't remember everybody that made it, made one and if, if you did make one you'll perhaps have to say in the comments and then of course we did the little Seminole quilt um, the t little table um, mat if you like it's, I always have to do sample quilts I can't ever do full size quilts because of the time um, and the, the Seminole one again was quite a lot of work and but that's why I do Christmas in July because it takes they take a long time they're very labor intensive they, they, they're much much more complicated designs if you like than than regular so I've got my two pieces of lining there we go I've got my uh, strap here where I'm going to cut up into loops and I've done it so this, this although this is the lining I thought that would be nice to have as my tabs and I've done it so my now I'm, I'm going to explain the reason why that I do my stripes going this way is because if we try to do um, the stripes going diagonal, uh, sorry, vertical like that, you can bet money that you're not going to get that straight. Okay, you can cut it as straight as you like, you can iron it within an inch of its life, but I can honestly, it's almost like a guarantee it might be slightly wonky, and I don't think it really justifies the fabric so it's really nice to do it vertically like that horizontally whatever but the opposite to the lining I just think you get more impact I think like that so often with binding if you do the stripes going that way like I say it has more impact so here we are this is the uh, I've got I've, uh, I've used H640 you can use what you like you can use um, H250 you could use I wouldn't use Bosal it's a little bit too much you know the inner form is a little bit too much use a soft wadding like 8020 um, H630 there's lots of different uh, waddings out there I always use this now for demonstrating because it's it's um, adhesive and I don't have to think too hard about my wadding moving and I've also cut it down by quarter of an inch that I followed the pattern believe it or not I followed the pattern so um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, actually I probably I'm not going to follow the pattern so much I think I'm going to st going to stitch my 
tab piece first and then cut that. This is eight inches long, so we're just going to cut it into two inch chunks. Um, so I think I'll do that first and then I'll go on to make the, the, the main body of the bag. So um, I'm just going to bring my, um, my machine in and uh, we can start uh, building our little tilly. Um, and don't forget, these, all of these Making It Monday projects are absolutely perfect for gifting for whether it's a birthday or whether it's um you know it, like, you know an occasion like easter or christmas or any of those just choose your fabrics just choose your fabrics so about a sixteenth of an inch i'm going down the folded side first no particular reason that's the one i put under my machine under my needle and instead of coming off at the end, I'm just going to literally swing it around. I'm going to do one more stitch, actually. Swing it around, go across the bottom, and then come up the other side. <laughs> if I could get that straight. <laughs> so if you've pressed this well, it sh this should be a doddle. This should be easy peasy. Um, and you get a nice, accurate stitching. But now we can cut that and I can just trim my threads to make it nice and tidy and because we're going to see we're going to use every square millimeter of this inch whatever uh, just make sure that your stitching is is really nice and neat on the ends as well and make sure you've gone right up to the ends so I'll put that to one side and we'll cut that into two inch chunks in a second um, ready for uh, the top of the, of the of Tilly. So I've got my um, outer pieces here. I've got this lovely strawberry fabric and it says here with right size together of the um, of the outer piece with the right size of the outer pieces together sew around three sides leaving one short end open. Okay let's do that. So let's put them right sides together and we're coming down one side, let me just make sure I've got that lined up. Come down one side, do a little back stitch. You just want a couple of stitches, you don't want to go mad. Oh, there's, there's Millie. Millie. Millie thinks we're going to be uh, burgled. <laughs> there we go. So all the way around, down to the bottom. Yeah, she thinks that we're, we're going to be invaded by somebody. They are funny, aren't they, dogs? If you're not about, well, I, I don't know about yours, but Millie's on high alert. She thinks she has to be a guard dog, fine. You know, sometimes I, I don't need her to be, really. <laughs> so, there we go. So right up to the top, let's do one more stitch. Go back a couple of stitches. Uh, Maggie says hi to Millie. She's just being noisy, Maggie. All right, so there we are. So there is our right sides together. So I've gone down here, along and up. So that's that bit done. So the next bit, I'm following the pattern, guys. Let's just put that down. So the next one is we're going to do exactly the same with the lining. So two pieces of lining. There we go. You can see the two pieces there. And we're going to, it says here, place the right sides of the lining pieces together and sew around three sides. Leave one short end open and leave a gap in one, in one long end for turning. So we, we should be side really, but so we're going to leave a gap on a long side here. But so we're going to come down, we're going to stop, we're going to skip over, do a little back stitch, come down, across and up, but right sides together. And I think this doesn't have a right or a wrong so we'll just um we'll just go for it now um it's nice to use something like a poly cotton for your lining oftentimes we get a poly cotton and we're not too sure what to do with it because obviously it's a lighter weight but actually poly cottons are really very useful because they are they're lightweight they're they're a they're very good for things like linings. Depends, you know, how you feel about that sort of thing. Let's do one more stitch. 
um, you know, you might want to use something incredibly fancy like some silk. <laughs> don't, don't let me stop you. Um, but when, if you've got some poly, poly cotton, which is actually quite a bit cheaper. Now, don't forget, we're going to box these corners. This, these are our, this is our short edge that we've stitched. And we're going to box these. So um, uh, you want to make sure that when you leave your when you leave your turning gap, you want to leave enough space. So you don't want your turning gap to start here. You want it to be further up, further up. So. Now let's have a look. Somebody, so Gillen, Gillen says, I missed the beginning. Would you be willing to show us what you are making again? We're making Tilly. So here's Tilly um, and it's a little sort of pouchy bag. I made it for like cosmetics and things like that. And it has this lovely detail on the top and they can be made bigger if you want to. Yep, they can be made bigger. And of course they're for gifting, really. I mean, you could, um, Obviously, you can make it for yourself. I, I make a lot of things for myself. And it's funny, when I go on my holidays, when I look around the motorhome, I probably have close to a dozen things that I've made because I'm, I'm you know, I make these, a lot of these things I design for myself. So <laughs> I make, and I make no apologies for that. So I've gone down here, stopped, little back stitch, Started here, or the other way around, next fact. Little back stitch came down across the bottom and up. Okay, so that's the two main pieces stitched. So let's have a little look at the pattern. I'm just going to bring you um, to the front just for a moment so we don't always uh, have the side view of the camera me nattering. Just going to look at the pattern. Okay, now it's telling me to box the corners. I could have done that on the overhead. So we're going to measure up from the tip. Now I'm not going to give you all of the dimensions and the measurements because what I'd really like you to do is to go and buy the pattern and have a little go yourself. So um, now it also says do not trim. Now there's a reason for that. Well, there's always a reason, isn't there? Um, so what we'll do is We'll put you on the overhead so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, that didn't iron very well. And um, I need my ruler. So you need a little ruler and you need a pen, a um, heat erasable, something like that. Water erasable, whatever you find um, best for you. OK, we all have different little things that we do. I'll just pin my mat back. OK, so each one of these now I need to do the um, box the corners okay so this is the lining now in the pattern it shows you that you can actually open these seams up what you want to do is to get your bottom seam sorry you get your bottom seam level with your side seam i mean it's not hugely imperative but it's nice to get them lined up and in the pattern what i've done is let's see if i can do that without too much fuss and you could do this with your iron if you want is to open that seam up like that and you end up with little dog ears can you see we've got little sort of dog ears here uh, and sometimes and if you do the same the other side sometimes that's easier then to see your corner so I'll do that and then you'll see what I'm talking about so if you lay that down on the worktop Line these up as best you can. OK, when you look at this, you can see exactly where the end of your stitching is. Whereas sometimes if you don't open up, it's not always easy. So if you're a new stitcher, I do recommend that you open up the seam like this. And where that point is, is where you measure. So getting my, my ruler, let's see if I can get this correct just going to look over the top. I'm just going to place one of my lines. So I've got this two line here. I, I don't know if you can see, I've got my lights. Uh, you can't see, but anyway, I've got my one of my strong black lines there. And all I'm going to do is draw a line across. Okay, and I'm going to put a pop a pin in there so it doesn't move. And that's where I'm going to stitch, but I'm not cutting. We don't cut the corners reason there is a reason um, then you can do the same again 
don't have to do this. I'll show you on the um, the outside one, just leaving it as it is. It's this, like I say, this is not crucial, but it's just a nice technique if you're new to stitching, um, because you can line these up beautifully. If you open up the gap as well, look, you can have a little peer through your window. You can look through there. Somebody's alarm going off now. Um, and you can see the seam. I don't know if you can see it, just there. And you can line everything up. Just makes it easier. Again, you can see the point there. And it means that you'll get everything lined up and nice and straight. So again, just line up. Put a black line on your seam line. And then you're just going to draw across, just like you did before. And then we'll pop a pin in just to hold it, okay? And all I'm going to do is machine along there and leave it. We do not trim. I don't know how many times I've said that now. Now, one of these wasn't very well ironed. Which one was it? This one, look. And because we're going to box this corner, we need to make sure that's nicely ironed. Now, this is gonna be tricky. So I'm going to see if I can, which one was it? This one. See if I can pop my iron inside. Shouldn't be putting it on my mat really, but then there we are. See if I can do that. <laughs> oh yes, I've seen everything now. Um, so just bear with. Let me see if I've got a piece of fabric I can use because we've um, boxed it together. Well, sorry, we've stitched it together. We're kind of stuck because we can't iron it on that uh, polyester. It would just melt. Well, I think we, I think we're going to have to say that'll do. And uh, just be aware. Make sure you iron your interfacing on really well. And the and the other thing I really strongly recommend is that when you have glued your interfacing on leave it overnight leave it overnight because what you're doing is that you're heating up the little glue dots that's on the obviously on the other side and you're heating that up making it li li kind of liquid gloopy um, and then you're asking it to bond to your fabric well if if you um, immediately use it when it's still hot which is how it is now there's a good possibility that that will not adhere properly. So this is my stitch here. So these are the two corners that I'm going to box. So again, I'm just going to pull that. You can see that hasn't stuck. It's very naughty of me. I should have done that properly. So this time I'm going to um, go from not open up just so you can see the difference. It would be so nice if I had glued that properly, but you know, we're not perfect, are we? So line it up. If you want to, get your hand in there and make sure your bottom seam is lined up with your side seam. And it's easy to do. And the other thing you could do is pop a pin in. So where your stitch line is along here, you could pop a pin in and make sure that it's hitting the stitch line on the, the other side. So either the bottom or the side. So from here, again, we're just going to measure so let's uh, get that there and draw your line. Not so easy when you've got interfacing. So I'm just doing little dots, holding it so it doesn't wriggle, popping a pin in. There we go. And then we're going to do the other side. Gosh, look, at honestly, what a rubbish job I did. <laughs> Wasn't concentrating, was I? I was too busy saying happy birthday to Meryl. That's what it was. <laughs> so let's do this one. So again, get your seams nice and flat. Like I say, use a pin to see if they're lying on top of each other nicely. Find your, <clears throat> your point of your seam. Put a black line on your seam as well. That's always really useful. And I'm just gonna do little dots. Um, it's difficult to draw on interfacing. Gosh, now we've got police alarms. It's all happening today. 
So there we are. So I've drawn all my lines and now I'm going to stitch along there and I'm going to stitch along my lining pieces, okay? So we'll bring the machine in. So just bear with me a second while we just do that. Um, bring it in. There we go. I really sometimes you ought to use a, a lighter machine. <laughs> right. And if you want to, like I say, keep those seams open. You don't need um, a fancy stitch, just a little straight stitch. 2.4 is fine. The seam allowances are um, a quarter of an inch. Pretty standard these days, isn't it? Um, I mean, we we borrowed kind of borrowed that from quilting, haven't we? I mean, dressmaking is always five eighths of an inch. Which now, listen, if you've never stitched a five eighths of an inch seam, uh, do it do it because it's massive of course a lot of patterns now use centimeter which is a little bit better although if you had to adjust you haven't got much to undo you know or, or adjust with you haven't got that fabric so we stitched along there you can use your iron to get rid of your lines if you want to um, Gosh, there's lots of happy birthday wishes going for Meryl. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? We are a lovely bunch of people. We are. We certainly are. Um, so, again, I will do a little back stitch because this is going to, you need it to be nice and strong. Straight across your, on this case, your dotted line. And cut your threads. And then we're going to do the other side. So I'm trying to hold on to my wadding. <laughs> oh dear. I could, have, um, I could have fixed it, but let's just assume you're going to be really good and adhere yours properly. Actually, I suppose I could have just used a spray glue, couldn't I? Never thought of that. It, we're always cleverer after the event. I found that out in life. <laughs> Oh dear, so there we are. So I've stitched those two corners there. Okay, so we've boxed that. So if I was to turn this right side out, I'm just laughing at all this ridiculousness. Um, what you want to do with your, um, which where you've boxed your corner and you've got your little V's, you know, your little triangles, you want those to sit flat inside. So if I was to hold that at the camera, you can see that inside they're lying flat and what that's doing is that it's giving your little um, tilly a, a bit of a flat bottom it'll sit nicely because you've given it almost like you've given it a base so again if you look inside you can see that those two triangles are sitting reasonably flat okay the same applies with the the lining i'm not going to turn this the lining inside out because we need now to stitch these two pieces together okay so I'll keep you there for a sec um, all I want to do now is to get my uh, tabs prepared so where did I put oh here it is so here's my let me just put you on the, the overhead camera we'll see so much better so there we are so let's push that out of the way so I've got my lining, I've got my outer, and this is my tabs. I haven't cut them yet, but I'm going to use my heat erasable pen. Here we go. I'm going to use my little scissors to cut. You could use your rotary cutter and just mark off uh, two inches. So two, two, and two. So you get end up with four tabs. So just give that a little snip. I ought to get a second pair of these. I'm so worried about them going blunt because I use them such a lot that I would be frightened if, if they did so. Um, I might get a second pair. It's crazy, isn't it? So with your tabs, <laughs> you want to, now you can use pins or you could use quilter's clips. Um, you need to fold them in half so your two short ends come together and you want to just put them against the seam line so can you see the seam line down the side of my bag 
I'm going to use quilters clips so let's just get a few of those in so um, I would imagine if you're in the north it's not very nice it's been raining today so sort of Yorkshire upwards that's what I'm given to understand um, and Northern Ireland as well the south of England Britain has been ridiculously hot so look what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just bring put my side seams on top of each other you can see I've got my two clips there and give that a little pinch <clears throat> and there as well so I'm just pinching it so I get a, a fold line and that's my mark to put the other tab in you could you could measure it of course you can so we're just going to put that on that little crease I made yeah so it's been 34 degrees today here in Suffolk which is not that pleasant um, I don't mind the sunshine obviously but 30 34 35 is a little little bit too much um, and my room is like a furnace it really is but I've got my windows open <laughs> So there we are, so there, now we've got the four little tabs attached. So all we're going to do now is pop our lining over the top. So obviously our lining is still wrong sides out. You, it wouldn't, it's not a bad idea to sort of, sort of give this a little bit of memory. You want it to fold in eventually, but we've also still got our turning gap where we can manipulate. So pop your outer into your lining and line up your side seams so let's let's see if we can find them you want to make sure that your tab is sitting between the layers take your clip under your clip take your clip off and clip your layers together go all the way round to the other side line up your side seam hold on to everything with with your thumb here take your clip off and clip all those layers again and like it like you you know you opened up the seam here obviously you can open up the seam there if you want to because this is a, a lighter weight fabric it's not crucial that you do that but it's nice and neat and tidy if you do so again we're just unclipping making sure that tab is sitting inside would be difficult to sew if it wasn't and then take the clip off, reposition it so you've got all of your layers sitting together. And that means that everything is now joined. So all we're going to do now is stitch around here. Now if you've got um, a free arm facility on your sewing machine and it will take that width, fantastic, um, use it. I don't have that. I do have a free arm but not a small one. So I will just use what I have, what I've got. Um, and if you're not using a free arm, stitch on the inside. So you're, instead of stitching on the outside, stitch on the inside. Okay, you'll find it much, much easier. So, all we're going to do now is pop this under our needle. Make sure that your tabs stay in place. We're going to start at a side seam, but you could start anywhere you like. It won't make a jot of difference. And a quarter inch all the way around the top of these two pieces. And as you come to a clip, then just remove the clip carefully. Um, if you're using pins, please do not sew over pins. You don't want to hear my story. <laughs> we well, might. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're Karen K. Buckley scissors. I've got um, two or three pairs of Karen K. Buckley scissors, and they are amazing. And the best ones, well, these little tiny baby ones, where are they? These, these little tiny baby ones, they're, they're like embroidery scissors. You can see, look how sharp they are there. Um, and they come with shields, but I can't, you know, they just get thrown. Um, the, the serrated pair are absolutely fantastic okay really good 
Yeah, so, um, and Jackie's just saying it, it is easier to stitch. If you don't have a free arm, it's easier to stitch on the inside. So if I lift this up, there's, there's my, let's move it a little bit. There's my um, tilly there, if you like. And I'm actually stitching on the inside. Not easy to see because that stays flat and I don't have any problems with layers. If I did it on the outside, well, it's, you try it and see. Try it and see. Do it one way. And when if you make another one, do it another way and see what you think. OK. Um, this is just down to experience. So I've gone all the way around. Like I said, I've gone on the inside of it. So if I was to turn this around as I had it, it sits, my, the foot of my machine sits here. It's much, much easier because all the uh, waste fabric, if you like, the, the, the bulk of the fabric is sitting above the machine and I can guide that, I can manipulate that. If I do it the other way around, all of this spare fabric is, is underneath and I haven't got a, a, it's not easy to control it. So this is a much better option, okay? It's always, it's always good to know the reasons why we do these crazy things because sometimes if you're not told, you think, well, well why? Why have you done it so it's, you're sewing on the inside? So, <laughs> oh, honestly, I'm just laughing at my wadding. So there we are. So we've stitched all the way around the top, about a quarter inch seam allowance. And if by some miracle you've remembered to put your turning gap in, then that's where we're going to turn it through, okay? But like I said, try and give your little um, triangles here a little bit of memory. And to be honest, if they don't stay there, you've still got your turning gap to manipulate them, okay? But we want them to sit underneath. We don't want them to sit, we don't, we don't want them to come up the side of, the, of Tilly. We want them to sit on the bottom. So let's just turn it through. Shall I, shall I stitch my turning gap? Did I with my original? Bear with. Oh, excuse me. I want a brownie point. Turning gap stitched. If anybody wants to award me with a brownie point, fantastic. <laughs> right, so don't worry too much about getting your lining perfect because we're going to shove it inside. So just get hold of the top, push your lining in. Now you really want to give this top an, uh, an iron. In fact, I top stitched my Tilly, so I think that's what I'll do. Push it in. And uh, what I want you to do is to try and make sure, as I said, that those, um, those little triangles are sitting on the bottom, not going up the side. Let me just find my turning gap. Here we go. So, let me have a look. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty confident that they're lying on 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 the um, on the bottom, because what this does, it squares it off because you've left all that bolt fabric there, um, and it gives it a flat bottom. I mean, you've you've flattened the bottom anyway by boxing it, but you, you've just got more bulk there. Okay. Um, and also, if you've got a bottle of something in there, it actually protects it if you were to bang it down on a counter. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch my turning gap. Yeah, I've got to take all this out again. And then I'm going to top stitch all the way around. Uh, ideally, you're going to give this a press, OK? But I'm just going to roll my seam. I'll have to cut those little threads as I go around. I'm going to roll my seam, put the heat of my hands, my fingers, on that seam edge and if you roll it like this it pushes that seam out and the one thing you'll end up having is a much more professional looking project than if you left it. Do you see those little naughty little threads? So let's bring in the machine again. Let's just do that while you're there. My lovely mat, it's, it's just super. It really, it slides everything in for me um, and keeps me, uh, keeps me right. 
could we yes you could of course you could use quilters tape to hold them down great idea I mean you could you could just use regular glue if you wanted to um, so look all you're going to do is with your turning gap find the start and finish of your your gap you can see there give it a little tug and it usually that quarter inch folds over automatically gives you a lovely edge so start somewhere before your gap it doesn't matter where I don't I very rarely do a back stitch there's no need and just come down as far as you want just and obviously make sure you're past the gap <laughs> You want, you know, just you know, be sensible. But you could use a pen to um, uh, to mark your start and finish points. So let's pop that back in. Again, you might want to make sure that your little triangles are sitting on the inside, on this bottom part. So just push those in, and then we're going to top stitch now. Um, because uh, I always stitch from the inside okay not the outside I'm actually going to turn this inside out okay so and what that means is when I stitch on the inside in there when I stitch in here I'll get a lovely lovely neat finish on my outer fabric which is much much better than doing that on my lining fabric Right, so let's just get that lined up. So really you're looking at a sixteenth of an inch. Now I know that's um, quite a small um, stitch length, uh, sorry, stitch width. Oh, it's not grabbing, that's it, that's better now. Um, but it makes a nice neat finish. You don't really want a clumpy bit of top stitching. You want it lovely and neat, as neat as you can possibly be. That's why ironing at every stage is what you should be doing. So a little bit at a time, I'm just rolling those seams. Lick your fingers if you need to, I won't tell if you don't. Um, and just get those... <laughs> it didn't like going over all the seams and the, and the tab, it's quite a lot quite a lot of uh, fabric going on. That's why um, uh, polycotton or something like that for your lining is good because it's a lighter weight fabric and it's not so heavy for your machine to go through. There we go. All the way around. I don't do a back stitch on top stitching. Let's just push that out of the way and just cut our threads so I mean it's a quick make obviously because I'm demonstrating I'm going um, slowly and carefully and making sure that you have seen as much as you need to see um, and we end up with a finished tilly which needs a press let's be honest needs a press so the next thing we need to do is to actually put our cord in. Now I did get some cord, well some ribbon. Now the best ribbon to use if you've got a long enough piece is the ribbon that you get in your jumpers. And ah, now I want my thingy, my bodkin. I'm just being lazy but you know if you've got something like this you might as well use it these are Japanese um, and that's that's the um, that's the name of there that's the name of them there I'm just trying I don't can't remember if that's the shop I don't think it is but if you put that in Google that name you'll come up and there's a there's a Japanese company in the UK that sell like Japanese needles, these bodkins, um, and it's quality. Uh, it makes a difference. So there we are. So all I've done is looped that through. I'll just put this back so I don't lose it. I've looped it through. 
So we've got these two ends here. So all we want to do now is to put a bead on. Now I've got the most amazing collection of African beads. Let's do it so you can see. Um, I don't think the holes are big enough. Let's have a look. Got, oh, look at these. <laughs> I don't know if you can see them. Oops. I got a wooden one there. But, oh, look at that. That would look nice because it's, the yellow is on the strawberry, or the green on the strawberry. I've got a little red one there. And uh, they're beautiful. But I need I need two bits of ribbon to go through them, so I've got to be I've got to be sensible. But I quite like the the green one here. I'm not sure I'll be able to get it through that hole. <laughs> we'll give it a go. And of course, you could get a bigger needle, which um, I don't have handy. So we'll see we'll see what how we get on with this. I'm going to try and do this two at the same time. You know it's going to be impossible, don't you? You know it's not going to work. But I'm going to give it my best shot. Nobody breathe, okay? If anybody breathes, you're going to ruin it. <laughs> There's one. Can you see? <laughs> Let's see if we can get the other one. It's gone really quiet now, isn't it? I've got one. Come on, little bead, you can do it. I push it through with my lovely scissors. Well, I've got more ribbon going through this bead now and it's not still not coming out, let's see. Oh, there it is, it's just come out there, look. What I need is, is a, a nice um, <laughs> embroidery needle, like a tapestry needle. So I've got my two, um, Try to do it so you can see it. There you go, got my two ribbons coming out. So what we really want to do is to put a knot in that. And not just one. You need two. Because you want to make sure that that doesn't go through. There. There we go, and that is going to pull that together. And when I've ironed it, <laughs> it'll look amazing. Look at that, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And that, if you've got a special bead, so the bead that I used for my original one is special because I think it came from my mum. <laughs> a lot of my stuff has. <laughs> So that's a lovely, sort of shiny, nice, very tactile. And the beads that um, Haley put on mine, the, the gift she made me, bless her heart, it's gorgeous, I like Chinese beads. Aren't they fabulous? And that's like a velvet ribbon. I wouldn't go any more than a quarter inch with your ribbon. I really wouldn't. You don't want anything that's heavy or bulky okay you want it to be delicate that's the idea of it anyway that it remains delicate so um there we are that's our lovely tilly made i think it's super it's great it's, it's a good size isn't it it's good size so that will take your uh, cleansing pads if you use that sort of thing but it'll also take creams and potions and lotions you'd be surprised how much it would take um also um i noticed just now it'll take a can of coke or pepsi if you if you want to put some thermalam in there and this is cold i took a little sip of that earlier it's red hot i thought right can't won't be drinking that but that's the effect you got and that's that's what really the pattern is all about for me that's why i designed it like that so there we are so I hope you uh, could follow that okay. Don't forget to iron your wadding properly. Get yourself some really thin, no bigger, no wider than quarter inch ribbon. And look out for some nice beads. So when you're at a craft fair or 
you know, where they're selling stuff, NEC, that sort of thing. Look for some fancy beads. You might not use them straight away, but these are the sort of projects where one fancy bead utterly makes the project. And if you imagine, you can gift that to somebody and they'll be, they'll be very pleased. They've got a very nice little bead going on there. So that is Tilly. I hope you've enjoyed watching. The links for everything that you may need here on Facebook are, are on the face in the comments. I'll try and add those onto the YouTube um, comments or the description. So, um, you know, if you're a YouTuber, you know where to find everything. And um, yeah, I think revisiting a MIM, making it Monday pattern is a really nice thing to do. So dig out your patterns. If you're an, if you're an oldie, if you've been with me for the last two, three years making making it Monday patterns, you've probably got Tilly tucked away on your download file on your PC or wherever you keep them. And uh, go make one. Won't, won't take you more than an hour. So I will see you all again very, very soon. I'll see you on Monday for the Making It Monday project. Um, if you're a gold member, I will see you next Thursday. So watch out for that. Um, and we're going to be, oh, it's the mid-month madness pattern on Thursday. So I need to make another date with you f for making um, the table cover, which is behind me, which is um, June. The table cover is called June. And that's, I need to demo that for you. So there we are. Thank you very much for watching. Um, thank you, Meryl, for joining in. And I hope um, you share this video with your son. And uh, it's been really an honour for me to, to wish you a very special happy birthday. And I hope you all have a lovely weekend. I've been told it's going to be a lot cooler tomorrow, so I will be very pleased about that. Um, in the meantime, I'll leave you with my picture and I'll see you all again on Monday. Bye.